So diamonds are great, right? They are extremely durable. There's no denying that they're really pretty. They take millions of years to form deep in the mantle of the earth where it's super hot and soupy. They're extremely expensive. And it's important when you're buying a colorless gemstone to know whether it's a diamond truly or if it's one of the many colorless gems used to imitate diamond. And that's what we're gonna go over today. We're going to take a look at some of the characteristics of diamond in its rough form, in its faceted form, and some of the characteristics that differentiate it from its imitators. So let's take a look at some of the characteristics of rough diamond. It's not likely that you're gonna be sifting through a pile of rough colorless gemstones, but I feel like telling you. So diamond tends to form in one of two ways. It can form in an oct octahedra, or it'll form as a mackle. So an octahedra, it can, uh, it can have rounded edges. It'll also often have trigons, which are these like triangular etch pits that are on the surface of a diamond. Trigons can occur on a mackle as well. Um, and then you've got these uh, edge lines that are parallel to one another that run along the edge of the mackle. It's got like this re-entry. It goes in and it comes back out like a, like a wedge. And uh, you'll often have herringbone lines uh, that go along this uh, outer side of the mackle. But like I said, you're probably not going to be sifting through uh, you, know, you know, a parcel of colorless gemstones and trying to find which ones are diamonds. So next we're gonna talk about faceted diamonds. And we're gonna be talking specifically about a uh, modern round brilliant cut, which is the most popular cut of diamond. Fancy equipment is always preferable, but it's not always practical. You're not gonna carry a refractometer with you to the jewelry store. So you need to have, first of all, confidence in your eyes. You use your eyes first. And here's what to look for in a diamond. The surface, like I said with the rough guy, very, very bright adamantine luster. The term adamantine is derived from the same word that diamond comes from. So adamantine luster is sort of reserved for diamonds and things of the highest caliber of luster, which describes the light that bounces off the surface of the faceted stone. On the inside, you're gonna look for fire, which is when white light enters a stone and then it gets split up into the individual colors of the visible color spectrum. And so you get those flashes of red and blue and yellow that you see in diamond. Diamond has very high dispersion. So if it's really bright on the surface, if it's got a little bit of a rainbow in it, those are two things that you can look for with just your eyes to determine if something is a diamond or not. But I recommend using a loop. A loop can be used to see clues that you cannot see with the naked eye. To use the loop, I like to press my thumb against my cheekbone just under the eye, my dominant eye. For me, it's uh, my right one. And I look through the loop, try and keep this eye open. It's kind of tricky at the start. And then hold the stone up until it is right in focus. Here's what to look for in a diamond. So look at the edges of the facets. They should all be razor sharp, no chipping, no scuffing. They should just be super clean and also very uniform. You don't want to poorly cut a diamond. You don't want to have your facets not uniform the way I drew them up on the board. You know, you don't want a diamond to look like that. And if it does, that should be an alarm bell. Secondly, the surfaces of the facets, also no scratches or abrasions really of any kind. Diamond is a 10 out of 10 on the most scale of hardness, so nothing should be able to scratch it. Hardness determining a stone or a material's resistance to surface scratching, and diamond is supremely resistant. If it's scratched up, it's probably not diamond. So the last thing you can look for using your 10X loop is the doubling of facet edges. So what do I mean by that? Well, you hold your loop up to your cheek, you hold the diamond up and you look at it kind of at an angle through the table. That's the top facet. And if you look through the diamond to the back side of the diamond, the opposite side, if you see the facet edges at the back side of the diamond and it looks like they're blurry or maybe doubling, then it's not a diamond. This is a, a property known as double refraction. And that's where a beam of light goes into a stone, it gets split into two different directions, and it causes you to see double. Diamond doesn't do that. Plenty of stones do, and some of them do it so strongly that you can detect it just with a loop. If you look through the top of the diamond and you see the facet edges are like, you're seeing double, it's not a diamond. Diamond don't do that. Let's talk about some of diamond's imitators, starting with maybe the worst one, glass paste. So glass paste is a man-made material that is sometimes used to imitate diamond, but it doesn't do a great job. For one, it sometimes is dull in luster, and that a convincing diamond does not make. Two, its dispersion is typically low, 
so it has not very much fire compared to diamond. And most condemning is its hardness of five, which means that its facet edges are gonna be chipped and scratched all day long. So if you're looking at two stones and wondering which one's a diamond, the one that is covered in scratches and chips is the glass paste. So the rest of the stones that I'm gonna talk about today all do a pretty good job visually of imitating diamond in their luster especially, but they all have one or two key characteristics that should raise alarms in your head if you're trying to distinguish them between diamond. So for synthetic spinel, this uh, characteristic is that it's not very dispersive. The fieriness and the spectral colors of red and blue and yellow are not nearly as apparent in synthetic spinel as they are in diamond. The same is true for synthetic corundum. Corundum, colorless, made in a lab to look like diamond, also does not have very high dispersion at all. It's very hard though, so it will be very bright and lustrous like a diamond, but it won't have the same fire. On the other side of the coin, synthetic moissanite is actually even more uh, fiery than diamond is. It's got a higher dispersion, and so you will see even more spectral colors in a piece of moissanite than you do in a diamond. Especially if you're holding them side by side, it should be fairly apparent which one has more fire, and that's probably the moissanite. If you have your loop with you, you can look through the table of a moissanite, and those facet edges on the opposite side of the stone will appear to double, um, and it'll be kind of blurry. Indicative of very strong double refraction, which is something that diamond does not have. Lastly is cubic zirconia, which is a very, very convincing imitator of diamond in a lot of times. But if you have your loop with you, what I want you to look for is the facets themselves. Sometimes in CZ, because it's a less precious material than diamond, it won't be cut very well. And I remember the first time I looked at a CZ that just had like wobbly facets and they were supposed to meet at a point but they met like this instead and I'm like that's not a very I, I was like I could cut that better you know that's not true absolutely not but CZ is less precious than diamond and so the quality of the cut is often far less than in diamond so if you see sort of rounded facet edges or facets that you know don't quite meet up where they're supposed to or they look like like a snaggly teeth or something like that it's probably not a diamond and it very well could be cubic zirconia. So these are just some tips to get you started just using your eyes and building confidence in what you see and also your 10x loop which I recommend having on you if you're trying to identify gemstones. These are the bare essentials. Um, there are plenty of tools and pieces of equipment like microscopes and refractometers that are a lot more diagnostic but you can't carry those around with you everywhere. So if all you can have with you is a loop, these uh, tips and tricks will get you very far. Guys, thank you for joining me today in the lab. Let me know down in the comments any other topics you'd like some quick tips on. And uh, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.